Between talking to everyone in the community here, as well as my own personal research and findings, I'm constantly learning about and finding out about new and unique travel products. So we're going to be doing another roundup today of some of my favorite and most unique travel products all under $100. This series was backed by popular demand. Everyone seemed to love when I did this last fall. So if you haven't seen that video yet, be sure to check it out as well. It's an entirely different list. I wanted to make sure there wasn't any overlap. But without any further ado, let's get into the items. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the ESR Halo Lock Magnetic Wireless Charger and Kickstand. Obviously really simple and intuitive with MagSafe. It just clips onto the back of your phone and rotates around pretty easily so you can get a number of different angles. You can plug this in and charge at 7.5 watts since it's a non-Apple device. Comes in at 25 bucks, which is great. The kickstand portion works really well. The lock is strong even with the 12 Pro Max. No issues with the MagSafe aspect. Uh, you have a wide variety of angles and the charger works as advertised. Next up, we have a new item in category that I historically haven't really needed for my personal travels, but have gotten so many questions about over the years with some of the loadouts I've shared, and that is an ultralight packable travel towel. This is the Sea to Summit Air Light Towel. I tried a handful of different ones over the past few months to test and see so I could kind of share my findings with the channel here, and this was my favorite by far. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't going to be some luxurious home travel towel experience, but for an emergency towel or a travel towel that isn't going to take up much space, I didn't really find much better than this. It comes in at four feet long by two feet wide, so it's a pretty substantial size, even though it's a bit smaller than a normal home towel. Um, I've used this at home for testing for a pretty extended period of time, and it is small, but it works, and even my hairy body is able to be dried completely. It also dries really, really fast, and yeah, 47 grams is what it comes out as and it packs up really really small definitely thin and light you have a handful of different color options but yeah this thing has been really impressive just to see how big it gets and how small it's able to pack down and still be absorbent and serviceable as a towel to use when you get out of the shower uh, it's only 20 bucks too so I thought that was pretty reasonable compared to a lot of options and it will pack down even if you don't want to do the whole fancy roll it'll pack down in here but yeah 20 bucks if you need to travel towel. This is something that's so small you can kind of throw it in your bag and forget about it if you don't need it. But if you're ever going somewhere where you're not sure if you're going to need a towel, uh, like I said, not my personal experience with a lot of my travels, but it seems to be a common concern for a lot of you out there. Uh, this one has been great from my couple of months of testing. Next up, we have a popular favorite and maybe even a little too obvious of one to include in the video, but I'm going to anyway. It is the Anchor Nano Pro. This is the 40 watt version with two USB-C ports, you get full 20 watts per port, and it is excellent and compact and small. It's really great to be able to travel and have such a small wall brick without having to compromise on the charging speed. So you get a full 20 watts per charge. Uh, they've sponsored videos in the past, and I've always loved Anchor stuff anyway. But yeah, 36 bucks for this, so pretty reasonable in the pricing. They do have some other colors available as well. You get two ports, charge two things at once while you're on your traveling, and you don't have to worry about taking up too much space in your bag. Next, we have a little bit of a different way to enjoy some coffee while you're out traveling, and that is the Wildland Coffee coffee sachets. Realize more and more over time, not everyone is quite the beverage enthusiast like myself, and not everyone wants to fumble around with different travel coffee kits. I've talked about those plenty in the past and really love using them myself, but if you want something that's a little bit simpler and easier, but not disgusting instant coffee packets, uh, these little coffee sachets are really great. It's essentially just like a tea bag. You steep it in a hot cup of water and you pull it out when you're done steeping and you have a nice cup of coffee. Really simple like instant coffee, but tastes way better. I don't have a ton of experience with all of the different brands out there. This one's from Wildland Coffee. The founder of this company reached out last fall and sent me some to try and I really like them. Uh, the guy's name was Zach. Seems like a small company. Uh, they have good ethically sourced Brazilian coffee beans that they use, but I would also love to hear, I know there are a lot of different options like this, if you have any experience with different brands and things, because I do use these for camping and backpacking sometimes, I typically will bring a coffee kit of some sort, whether it's the packed coffee kit or an AeroPress Go. Those are my two go-to favorites for travel situations, but if you need something really convenient or if you're looking to really save some space in your bag, these are great and so substantially better than the instant coffee 
packets. While we're on the topic of coffee, I want to take a minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Third Wave Water. Third Wave Water is a blend of minerals that are designed to create the perfect water for brewing coffee. The water that you use in the coffee you brew at home is such a crucially important part of the process and one of the most often overlooked things. People will get $500 coffee grinders and nice gooseneck kettles and single origin coffee beans and forget about the water and wonder why their coffee doesn't taste as good as their local coffee shop. After a month or so of using Third Wave Water for my home brewing, I can confirm it has been excellent and has been one of the biggest changes and improvements to my cup of coffee at home in literally years. In my personal experience, it was a pretty night and day difference in reducing some of the bitter notes in my coffee as well as bringing out some of the natural sweetness and acidity. I've generally been using the Classic Profile, but they also make one designed for dark roasts and they make one as well for espresso. The process is pretty simple. You get little packets that you dump into a gallon of distilled water, shake and just kind of set aside and use that to put into your kettle every morning when you're making your coffee. All in all, I've been really impressed with Third Wave Water since I've been using it. I'm not exaggerating. This has been the single biggest jump in the quality of my home coffee in years. So if you're a coffee nerd like me, be sure to check the links in the description. Uh, huge thanks to Third Wave Water for sponsoring this week's video. Next up, I've got another power solution and that is the Banks MagSafe Wireless Power Bank. It's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery just sticks to the back of your phone with MagSafe at uh, 7.5 watts of charging, not the full charge because it's not the Apple branded one, but you do get 12 watts if you go through the power option. It's a USB-C port as well. Overall, I've been really happy with this. The thing that stood out to me most for being a brand I hadn't heard of was just the overall fit and finish. It's a nice like soft touch silicone and it works perfectly well. It's small enough where you can kind of throw it in your bag and it's not intrusive enough where it's going to get in the way when you're holding your phone. Next, I have a piece of clothing. This is the Outdoor Research Echo Sun Hoodie. This was a new pickup for me this year. I've had it for a couple of months for hiking and backpacking. I had the Patagonia Cool Calpoline Sun Hoodie that I used all through last year and maybe the year before a little bit. I can't remember exactly. I started to get some rolling on the bottom hem and it was starting to shrink up a bit. So I wanted to try something different. Uh, so far, the first couple of months of using this for hiking and backpacking has been excellent. Sun hoodies are also a really great option for kind of regular travel depending on how you travel or your style of travel or what you're gonna be doing on any specific trip. And if you're not gonna be spending much time outside, this is completely unnecessary. But I know for me, even if I'm traveling to a city, I'm usually spending the good majority of the day wandering around the city, kind of taking in the sights, uh, trying out new coffee shops, restaurants, things like that. I have very fair skin and burn really easily and I really don't wanna get skin cancer. So I really try and protect my skin as much as possible when I'm going to be spending more than like 15 minutes outside. It's a little ridiculous, I know. I really like the cut and fit of this though. It has a hood if you need to wear one if the sun's behind you. It also has thumb holes, which is more of a hiking thing, but I suppose you could use it for normal day-to-day -day travel if you need. But it does have some odor management technology in the fabric as well, um, so that will help over time to prevent any sort of stink if you're sweating. Again, more of a hiking specific problem, but still good for regular travel as well. Uh, the full price of this is is $69, but I would strongly encourage you to check around for sales and wait for one because it is constantly on sale in one store or another. I think I got mine for like $45. I can't remember exactly where that was, but check around before you buy one. I would highly recommend it, especially for the discounted price if you hold off and get one there. It's the Outdoor Research Echo Sun Hoodie. This was one of the most highly recommended products I've gotten from all of you in the community here, and that is the the nano bag ultralight compact shopping bag. It was recommended to me as an alternative to my B green reusable shopping bags that I usually keep in my EDC. Those are a little bit bigger and bulkier, but they are a little bit sturdier and have a lot more capacity in comparison. So it's kind of a trade off thing, but for travel specifically, I think this is a lot more viable of an option just because it packs down so small. You can fit it in your pocket, fit it into your sling bag, fit it into your purse and just kind of forget about it. It's 14 liters in capacity. 
and $14. Um, there's not much else to say about it. It's pretty thin fabric, but I've used it for groceries for a few weeks now since I got it and it's held up perfectly well. It doesn't seem like it's going to break. Um, and based on the amount of you that recommended it to me, I don't think there would be any issues. And I have tried a couple different of these like ultra compact reusable bags before. I tried one from Sea to Summit, their Ultra Sil Nano bag. And I ended up returning it because it was too difficult to get into the stuff sack. I think a lot of it, it was a really slippery material. Um, this material is much easier than the Sea to Summit one that is very similar. So that was why I wanted to recommend this one. I was worried that this one would be the same as the Sea to Summit, but it's held up really well and packs down much easier than the others I've tried in this category. So this is a great thing just to throw in. You never know if you have carry out or if you're out shopping in a city and you just don't have a full backpack with you to store stuff. You don't want to be carrying around a bunch of shopping bags all day or just having to carry stuff loose in your hands while you explore a city. Really small, compact, lightweight, inexpensive, just a great addition to most people's bags. Last item on the list is the Packed Anywhere 5 liter sling bag. Most sling bags are gonna be perfectly fine for travel, so if you already have one, you're probably good already. But if you are in the market for a new one, the Packed 5 liter sling is great. Uh, I also have been using the Air Day Sling 3 Max. Um, that's a six liter bag, so pretty similar in size to this, but this one packs down a lot flat and it's just a little bit easier to pack. And one thing I really like about this one compared to that one is you can actually tuck away the shoulder strap and use it on the plane as just like a little plane bag for snacks or tech or anything like that. The shape is really nice to be able to hold a lot and I really like that they included some gussets on the side so when you unzip it, you, know, you can keep it on and unzip it and you don't have to worry about all of your stuff falling out. Uh, the Packed Anywhere collection is actually shipping from pre-orders finally um, this month. I'm not exactly sure on the dates, but if the pre-order is still going on, they are offering a bit of a discount on these, but by the time this video goes live, those might be live and shipping normally as well. I'm not sure. I'll link whatever I can in the description below, but I've had this for about a year, maybe even a little bit more now at this point, and it is a great option as a sling bag. That's gonna wrap it up for this edition of Travel Gear Under $100, though. I really hoped you found some useful things in here. I'd always love to hear if you have anything specific that you wanna recommend or have me try out or test. Leave that in the comments. Let me know if you have any trips coming up. Leave that in the comments as well. Thank you all so much for watching, though, and I'll talk to you in the next one.